Hi everyone. Um, sorry I haven't done um, a video of just me in a while. And um, I think I say in everybody video, sorry that my hair's a mess. Um, I've decided that I'm going to let it grow out through the winter till it gets to the point that I can't stand it anymore. And then um, get it cut. So, um, this video is about our storms and, um, sorry, our storms and, um, tornadoes that went through Ohio on Sunday, November 5th. Um, that's part of the reason why I haven't, um, been on much or done, um, too much, too many videos. Um, I'll st excuse me, I'll start off by saying that, um, Sunday, we knew there were storms coming and they said possible tornadoes, but usually in our area, we don't get anything severe. So we didn't really worry about it. We borrowed my parents' truck to go pick something up so that we didn't have to take our water tank out of our truck and then try and put that back in. <clears throat> we borrowed it in the morning. We went and did what we had to do. <coughs> Excuse me. We went and did what we had to do. We brought the truck back to them, and it was roughly probably 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I don't know. But anyway... Um, on our way back, taking them their truck, it looked like, you know, behind us where we had just left from, um, it looked dark like it was going to storm, but we were over in the area by the water, so, um, sometimes that's just normal. So, we take them the truck back, they were, um, out in the shop, my dad's shop, with my cousin, um, two of my cousins and um, the neighbor guy or the neighbor boy, call him a boy because he's 22, I think, younger than me. But anyway, and my mom, they were all sitting out in dad's shop and dad was working on a chainsaw and, and everybody else was just uh, talking and eating um, deer jerky um, that my parents had made and drinking a few cold beverages. And, um, we were supposed to go to Walmart in a town that's about 20, 25 minutes away. And, um, we ended up sitting there talking and stuff and having a few, dog, quit, um, having a few beverages. So we didn't end up leaving to go. And, um, it's kind of good that we decided not to go. Um, sorry about that. It's good that we decided not to go, um, because of having cold beverages and it was getting later in the day. So we, um, just hung there for a while and we closed the, sh the uh, big shop door down, um, because it was getting breezy and cold and starting to rain. And next thing we know, um, it's how it was downpouring and we didn't know if there was a lot of wind because the shop don't have no windows or nothing and um we were like oh look oh my gosh the rain is leaking in the wall and my dad said that's never happened before and um me and mom were sitting it kind of in the middle of the shop and everybody else was here and over there and I said, I just got dripped on. And my mom said, so did I. And dad said, oh, no. He said, my roof better not be leaking. We don't know if the roof was dripping or if it was the wind blowing it in um, from the back wall that had water running down the wall. It's a pole barn. Uh, yeah, pole barn. And then it's got um, plywood siding on the, the, uh, out, the uh, outer part. So, with a shingled roof. So, anyways, we're sitting in there and um, listening to the wind and something on the outside of the shop was banging. 
up against the um, wall. And we're like, my dad, he's like, wonder what that is. Well, um, we're listening to the rain and stuff, and we didn't think it was windy. We thought it was just a real heavy downpour. And um, all of a sudden, the shop walls, you could see them flexing. Um, the door that we had just put down, you could see it flexing in and out a little bit. Um, things that Dad had hanging on the walls, rakes, shovels, um, just tools and stuff. Um, some of them you could see them swinging a little bit, and um, we were making jokes um, because the power was flickering off and on and stuff, and we were making jokes that, oh my gosh, um, we're going to look out and things are going to be damaged and uh, um, roofs are going to be taken off of houses, and here we are sitting in a building that's um, <clears throat> a little bit of nothing. And we're all going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. Well, um, my cousin opened the, the door on the side, just like a man door, I guess you'd call it, like a house door, exit door, whatever. <clears throat> opened it on the side to look over, look out, and look over two houses over at my aunt and uncle's. And um, they said that uh, the trees were bending and stuff. And um, my cousin got a text message from my aunt that they were going to the basement because they didn't like what they were seeing. Well, then all our phones, it, all every single one of us in there, there was um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of us. <clears throat> our phones started um, like screeching, like a high pitched noise. We're like, what the heck? And it was a tornado warning. So we're like, um, the way the wind was and the rain, we weren't going nowhere because my parents' house don't have a basement anyway. So we're like, uh, we're not going anywhere. <clears throat> so anyway, then all of a sudden my cousin gets a, um, another text message or a phone call or something from my aunt that um, their kitchen, over the old kitchen, because they have an old kitchen and then a new one that they added on, um, and they, they use both of them for when they, when they can and stuff. Anyway, the old kitchen, the uh, metal or the tin, whatever it was, um, and the roof uh, was coming off, and my uncle climbed up there in the storm because the rain had let up some um, <clears throat> with a, with screws and a screw gun trying to put it down by itself. So, um, but the boys went over and helped him put it back on. But before that, um, my dad said that his truck cap that was, excuse me, that was sitting over the bed of his um, old truck that uh, sitting there broke down. He said, um, he said, oh crap, the uh, truck cap is not, um, tied down. It's just sitting there. Well, my cousins looked out and they said, Uncle Dave, it's not there. He said, that didn't surprise him. So they looked, looking around and they said, it's not here. So Dan went out, and uh, <clears throat> my dad's truck was parked here. The truck that we had dropped off was in the driveway parked here. The cab was in between both of the trucks, which is good space in between, but it was in, the, in between the trucks, and it was up against the truck that we had uh, just dropped off to him. And um, I don't know if it did any damage or not, but... So they found that, and I don't know if it was mingled or not. <clears throat> My dad, in front of the shop, um, with a picnic table underneath it, um, that he sits out there and does some works on stuff, um, it was twisted, laying next to where it was at on the picnic table, and the canopy part was, um, was tore off of it, but it was still hooked onto one corner. <clears throat> Had the pinning table not been there to catch it, it probably would have ended up at the neighbor's house. Um, hold on a second.
Okay, sorry about that. I'm back. I was, um, it's getting hot in here, and I was going to, um, don't be barking. I was going to um, turn the furnace down some, but it just kicked off. So anyways, then um, when my cousins went over to help my uncle put the roof back on, um, we get a phone call from our neighbor that um, <clears throat> her big cedar tree that's at the corner of her house next to our driveway um, was broken off and laying in our driveway. Um, it hit our garage and it took our power line down. Um, but she had power and so did everybody else on our road. Um, so had we been home, our truck would have been hit too. Um, I do have pictures, but I don't know how to put them on YouTube in a video or nothing because I don't even know how to edit videos. But anyway, came down, hit our garage, damaged the roof, um, pulled the weather head down for the meter and for the wire. And um, so the, we called the power company. They come out and they said we had to hire an electrician to fix that, the weather head and stuff. And then they would come back out and put the wire back up. So Monday, we had somebody come out and fix that. And then um, we were out there at like 7.30, 8 o'clock with the neighbors because they just got off work because they worked third shift. And Okay, sorry about that. Um, that was the um, insurance company about all this. So anyway, back to what I was saying is, so, Monday morning, um, the neighbors, when they got off work, working third shift, um, they pulled right in our driveway and didn't even pull in theirs, and um, had a friend with them and cut up their tree off our driveway and stuff, and then um, we had um, Dan's brother come out with his stepson, who is a licensed um, electrician, and fixed that that needed fixed. And then we called the power company and they come out and got the power back on. So we were without power, oh, probably 24 hours, maybe a little more than that. So, so that's what happened. And then um, we have pieces of our garage. Sorry, my dog, she's got skin problems, she's scratching. Um, we got pieces of the garage, the aluminum pieces that go on the front, up in the trees, and um, a piece of that that came off the front of our house that's in a tree. Um, we have um, the side yard, we had um, trees that are all, um, some of the trees are snapped completely off halfway down and then um, other trees are um, just big old branches that snapped off and come down so the neighbor when we weren't home and Monday when we ran to get a part um, for the electrical stuff out there um, came over and cut most of it up and I think we have two more two or three more trees the willow trees is what they left um, we got the willow trees that we need to, um, cut and clean up yet, so, but anyways, that's what happened, and my neighbor over on this side of us, besides her big tree coming down in our driveway, um, she has a willow tree that's next to her pond, and, um, it needed to cut down anyway, and it was splitting in two pieces. One piece fell down into her pond. Um, they're going to have to have somebody with an escalator, escalator, yeah, you know what I mean, excavator, come and um, pull that up out of the pond, and they don't have money to do that, so, because it's a willow tree, it'll probably end up rooting into the pond, and um, other than that, the, the two trees, they didn't have no damage compared to ours, and then the neighbor on this side, um, didn't have any damage other than the barn. Um, some of the tin or metal roof on the barn got um, peeled and all pressed and twisted and stuff. And then, um, 
nobody else in the area had any damage. So it's like it went right through here. And then um, down the road a ways, there's no damage whatsoever, but there's a cornfield that they haven't taken the corn off yet. And you can see the corn is twisted and laying down. But they didn't assess anything through here. Um, the National Weather Service stuff didn't assess anything through here. Um, but we don't, so we don't know if a tornado came through here or if we got straight line winds off of um, the other tornadoes. But sorry, this video is so long, and I wish I could show you guys pictures, but um, I did put some pictures on my Facebook. But, um, I didn't put them public or nothing, so. But anyways, um, I got this paper, and, um, this video is going to be long, but just kind of bear with me. This is a list of the, uh, um, tornadoes that were confirmed in my area. So, six and a half miles northeast of Clyde, Ohio. Um, Clyde is 20, 25 minutes from here. Um, it was an EF1. They confirmed that the wind was 90 to 100 mile per hour. Um, one mile east, southeast of Bloomingville was an EF1 with winds of 100 mile per hour. Tree damage and there was a roof ripped off a house on uh, Mason Road over towards, um, Mason Road's over towards um, Sandusky, Ohio, which is... Um, Another town that's about 20 minutes from here. And Tuesday, Dan didn't work on Tuesday because of the power being turned back on late on Monday. <clears throat> and um, we went driving around and we drove by that house on Mason Road. And um, the, the wood is still there and part of the tar paper. But some of, some of the tar paper came off. There's no shingles left on the roof. And the back side of the house is just, it's mingled. So, um, five miles north, northeast of Republic, Ohio, EF2 tornado, 110 mile per hour. <clears throat> and it said there was a touchdown in a field. And um, it was on a county road, and then it went up to State Route 18. And it took out an 80 foot by 100 foot barn. It picked up this barn, and the barn was uh, in the road, a state route. It was in the road. Um, and if you you guys, if you don't know Ohio or anything, um, you can look up these towns and um, see where these towns are. Um, West Lodi, it was an EF1. 105 mile per hour wind. Um, it touched down on um, North County Road 27, which is the road that goes right through this town. This town's in the country. It damaged five homes, uh, destroyed some sheds, trees, some houses shifted, their foundation shifted, and um, it flattened a cornfield, kind of like the one down here that I was telling you about. It flattened it. Um, they had electric poles down, all kinds of stuff. And um, this is a town that's probably about 10, 15 minutes from here. Uh, Galleon, Ohio had an EF2 with 115 mile per hour wind. Um, but that one didn't say what their damage was. Uh, Stu Ben, Ohio, had an EF1, 105 mile per hour, touched down south of State Route 162, uh, damaged some silos. It crossed State Route 162 and hit a house and a barn, and it rolled a grain bin out onto or near um, another road. So, I mean, yeah. Thing, things got tore up, and Stu Ben is another town that's about 10, 10, 15 minutes from here. So that's why I'm saying I don't know if we had a tornado that actually come, you know, 
through here or if we were just getting straight line wind. Because no matter which way you go on the road, on our road, um, besides the cornfield down here, our place with um, the trees and um, the neighbor's two big trees coming down and the one coming down on our power line and then all our damage to the garage from the tree and from the wind and um, the side yard, all the trees that were damaged, uh, we had the worst damage out here. So, like it went straight through. Uh, um, let's see, south of Norwalk, EF1, 90 mile per hour. Um, State Route 61 to Prue Hollow Road, damaged trees on Ridge Road, hit New State Road and damaged barns and sheds, ended at Old State and State Route US 250. Um, I know a lot of this is not going to mean anything to you guys, but I just wanted to share it. And um, that area is probably 15, 20 minutes away from from my house. Um, Fitchville, Ohio, EF0, and they confirmed 85 mile per hour. And that one didn't say um, any about any damage or anything. Oh, excuse me. That was rude. Sorry, guys. Um, south of Wakeman, Ohio. Um, I was born and raised in Wakeman, Ohio. And that town is about half an hour from here. Um, had an E. Hold on. Okay, sorry about that. It was turned around and I thought somebody was here. Um, anyway, south of Wakeman, Ohio. I was born and raised there. That's about half an hour from here. An EF1 tornado, 90 mile per hour. Um, it went down Town Line Road north of State Route 18. Crossed Fitchville River Road, took out a barn on St. John's Road. And um, that's a, a pretty wide path, but that's another town that's um, about half an hour from here. Um, Nova, Ohio, EF0, uh, 85 mile per hour near State Route 511. It didn't say about their damage, and I'm not sure how far that is from here. Um, Hayesville, Ohio, EF1, 100 mile per hour, um, State Route 61, touched down in a cornfield, flat in the cornfield. And I'm not sure how far how far that is from here. Uh, Wooster, Ohio is about half an hour to 45 minutes from here. Um, they had an EF1 tornado at 100 mile per hour wind and um, I'm, I'm not sure about their damage. Um, Williams Field, I'm not sure where that's at. EF2, 127, 127 mile per hour wind. Route went down state route 322. 20 homes have minor damage, mobile homes destroyed. And um, I'm sure there's more damage than that, but. And um, where my parents live, um, they probably had straight line wind too. Mill Creek, I'm not sure where that's at from here. EF1, 90 mile per hour. Damaged homes and stores, reached Interstate 79, and damaged businesses. And then it said straight line wind, Finley, Ohio, 80 to 90 mile per hour. Um, Finley is about an hour and a half from here. Kipton, Ohio, 70 to 80 mile per hour. Kipton is about probably 40 to 45 minutes from here. Um, Southeast Lorraine County to South Geauga County, 105 mile per hour. And Boardman, I'm not sure where that's at. 
95 to 100 mile an hour winds. Okay, and then they said Huron County, which is the county that I live in, but going up this road right here next to us, go probably a mile to two miles that way, and then you're in um, a different county. But Huron County had three EF1 tornadoes and one EF0 tornado. But it doesn't say um, where because, let's see, um, let's see, south of Norwalk, that's here on county. Wakeman's here on county. Um, but those are the only two that I see that are in here on county. So, um, but. Oh, sorry, I was laying that on the table. But anyways, that's what went on. So, um, we are waiting for the insurance company. They said our deductible would be $500. They said if the estimate to do the work is, um, depending on how much over the 500 it is, we can go ahead and, um, Ha do the claim, but if it's under five hundred or like six or seven hundred dollars or whatever, they said that um, um, that'd be kind of silly to do the claim. But what we do know um, to have the roof done, um, just an estimate. The guy, we're still waiting for him to uh, um, submit the estimate to the insurance. Um, he said $845 just to do the garage roof. And, um, we're going to try and add in the house to, um, sorry. We're going to try and add in the house too, because there is a piece of aluminum came off the front and, um, from older storms, there's shingles up there. Or, Bricks up there holding shingles down from an older older wind damage. So we figured um, while we're doing a claim, we'll might as well see if we can um, get the house and at least one of our garages done. So and when the adjuster comes out, um, you know, um, maybe we can get all three of them done. But um, at least. Hopefully we can get um, the house done with the garage that got damaged. So um, I don't see why they wouldn't. But and then if anything ha happens again, our deductible will be more than five hundred. But um, we we can't afford to fork out no eight hundred fifty dollars um, to have that that roof done. So. I mean, we got that money, but um, we don't, you know, we don't want to have to um, fork it out to have that roof done and then something else happen, you know, that's more serious than that. And then we don't have that money. So, um, but we're just going to wait and see what happens. And so. And I guess they said the insurance adjuster can come out and look at it um, before the estimate's given. So we're still waiting on the estimate. The guy uh, for the house part. So he don't let us know soon and we'll just get an estimate from somebody else. So we'd like to get it done before it gets too cold, before the... Uh, snow starts to fly and before more damage is done so but anyways um i'm gonna get off here and um so hope i didn't bore you with my video and um sorry there was no video uh, um showing the damage or anything it happened so quick and then the neighbors come over and help clean up and everything that i barely even got pictures to um to show the uh insurance and stuff so 
because uh, everybody did clean up so quick. So, but there's still a couple of willow trees over there that we need to take care of, but um, we'll get it done. So, but anyways, um, like, share, subscribe, and um, hopefully I didn't bore you, and um, I will um, talk to you guys soon. Bye.